It's a humid but cool morning here in South Texas. I'm about to go meet Ethan. We're about to do a couple hours endurance. Should be fun. Kind of early though. Ethan likes to get up early, but I'm not gonna complain. I've got breath in my lungs. I'm out on the bike. Let's get it. So regular viewers of the vlog probably remember this guy. What's up, Ethan? What's going on? <laughs> Good to be riding with Ethan this morning. He's uh, in town for some classes this summer, and it's nice to have someone else who's about your same level to ride with. <laughs> I might be a little faster. Maybe, oh, maybe a little bit. Maybe. Just kidding. No, Ethan's pretty strong. We're having fun this morning, couple hours, two and a half hours, before it gets too hot. Ethan, you're thinking about waxing your chain, aren't you? I'm thinking I am. Okay. So why is that? One of the big reasons is when we went to nationals, we drove all the way from here, Fall Station, to Albuquerque. Oh and wow! I spent you know, before we left. I put it on the sand. I got it all clean. I spent probably hour, hour and a half. I know that's a little bit long. Well, hey, a clean bike is a fast bike. It is a fast bike, yeah. So <laughs> I take my time with her and make sure she's clean. And then we drove there. And when I took it off the back of the truck, there was dust, there was grit, there was dirt. Nah. I spun the crank once. And the amount of crunch I heard. Ah, the crunch. <laughs> Nasty. It was absurd. So wax pretty, the chain, bro. Pretty unfortunate. And then Evan and Dylan. Their chains were waxed. They had no issues, yep. no crunch, no lube. Right. Didn't have to worry about cleaning. So that'll do like it. The most efficient. So if you've never waxed your chain before definitely a little bit of a process but in terms of drivetrain efficiency in terms of cleanliness man second to none like you won't go back to oil-based lubes once you get into waxing your chain So I was talking with a friend the other day and he was saying how sometimes it really confuses him to hear some of his friends in his Bible study kind of debate theology back and forth, but then never really have kind of like a, I don't know, like a real lifestyle change as a result of their theology. And, you know, as a pastor, this is something I see a lot where people want to understand something, but then when they understand it, it's kind of like, there's some mental satisfaction of going, all right, like I finally understand what this verse means. But then the point is like, there has to be follow through on that understanding. That understanding should change the way you live. So here's my hot take of the day, Ethan. Ready? You Ready. don't get eternal life just by believing something. Jesus is not gonna go, good job, you believe something in your head. Might be a hot take, some people think, wait, Josh, you're talking about salvation by works. No, that's not what I'm talking about at all. Let me explain.
So Jesus never anticipated a lack of response from his disciples. He never just said, hey, believe I'm the Messiah. In fact, Jesus hadn't even died for their sins yet. And they're going, oh, he's the Messiah. That's a topic for another video. But he anticipated a response. Just like John the Baptist, when John the Baptist came preaching, he said, bear fruits in keeping with repentance. Like, don't just say, oh, cool, God's coming and he's gonna do what he said. No, a response was required. So the Apostle Paul prays in Colossians chapter one, that the disciples in the church in Colossia would have wisdom and understanding so that they would walk worthy of the Lord. That's the whole point. It's not just so that they would have wisdom and understanding and, you know, understand details for the sake of understanding details. It was so that they could have a walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, and that they would bear fruit in every good work and they would increase in the knowledge of God. That's what the whole passage is about. So the whole point of the details of the story of the Bible, the whole point of understanding who Jesus is and what he's done and where this is going is so that we would respond. Our lives would look different. Because as I've said in the past on some of my other videos, the age to come and the people who are a part of the age to come are gonna be the people who walk like Jesus in this age. So we're coming to the end of our little loop here. Ethan's about to pull off. Good ride, man. Yes, sir, great ride. Good ride. Always fun to have someone else to ride with. Solo's cool, but man, time passes. Good conversation. Still got more to say to the vlog though, so we'll come back here in a minute. So I like to think of this as three C's, three C words. The first, clarity. We wanna get clarity on the scriptures. Clarity as to what the Bible says about what Jesus has done, about where the future is going, what the Bible says about the day of the Lord, the age to come. We need clarity. So this is the details. Dig into the details. But the second C is certainty, and it comes from Luke chapter one, where Luke is writing and he says, I want you, Theophilus, to have a certainty about the things that you've been taught. The details lead you to a certainty about what God has promised, about what he's done, and about where this is going. And the final C is commitment. A commitment to obey Jesus, especially when no one's looking, even when it gets difficult to do so. That's the whole point. If we just study theology for the sake of theology, just to say, cool, I understand this verse, that's not gonna mean anything if it doesn't lead to a response of wholehearted obedience to what Jesus said and taught. So friends, let's remember Paul's words when he said, I can have knowledge of all of the mysteries, but if I don't have love, I'm nothing. I'm just a noisy drum, a noisy cymbal, clanging. And remember what Jesus said that he says, love is obedience. He said, if you love me, you'll obey what I taught. Of course, this isn't complex, but it is hard. It is hard. I mean, I'm saying this, you know, as a guy who helps facilitate a really deep theological podcast, <laughs> that it all means nothing unless we actually obey Jesus in the end. So friends, if this was encouraging, leave me a comment down below, like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.